morning and welcome to the Just Because Buzz. This is Tuesday, August 25th, 2020, and I'd like to welcome you to my channel. Um, this is a channel where I talk about cross stitch and quilting and uh, needle turn applique, wool felt applique, uh, just all kinds of different stitchy things. If you are new to my channel, thank you for stopping by. I hope you will subscribe and leave me a comment. I love reading comments. And if you're returning to my channel, thank you for coming back and visiting with me today. I would love to hear your comments, questions, and love reading those. So um, be sure and leave one and like this video if you like it. Thank you. So I'll just get right into it. Um, this week, uh, last two weeks have been busy and um, enjoyable. And uh, I did get to do something that I'd been wishing to do for um, several weeks now as I get to go down to the craft gallery and meet some folks down there. They were having their annual stash sale where they allow folks to come and kind of do like a garage sale atmosphere outside the shop and inside the shop. And um, so I set up a little table there uh, for a little while and got to meet some folks. So that was fun. Um, I really want to thank Michelle with Creative Mayhem for stopping by. It was great to meet her. I knew she was going to be there. We had contacted each other and she actually bought one of my um, project bags that I had made. And so that was really special to me. Thank you, Michelle. And thank you for the shout out. And then I also got to meet Pam from Just Keep Stitching with Pam and Steph. Pam was there. Steph had to work, but um, Pam was there, so I got to meet her. And if you've watched her video, um, she didn't recall that I had a table there, <laughs> and she didn't recall the origin of my name. So if you want to go back and look at her, um, their video, and look at our um, conversation in the notes below, you'll get a kick out of that because it was it's pretty cute. Um, it was very, very hot that day, and um, I only lasted about two and a half hours and didn't have near the amount of stuff to sell that some of the other folks did, and um, so I just decided to, uh, about 12.30, pack it up and go inside um, and shop, and um, Paula had provided lunch for us in Carlton, and it was just so nice. Um, a wonderful shop. Everything that everybody had said, and the folks were just wonderful to meet. Um, so, And then I also got to meet another friend that I've met through my channel, and that is Anne. And she stopped by. She actually lives in Finley, so that was really fun to meet her. And she got to meet Michelle, who lives close by. So we hope to one day do a, a girl luncheon or something and just... Um, get to know each other a little better and um, talk about stitching and things. So it was really a fun day. It was something I had looked forward to and I uh, just loved meeting other stitchy folks and um, look forward to getting to go back to the craft gallery one day soon. So that was a really a lot of fun. Uh, it's been a highlight um, for sure. So I also wanted to um, just talk about what I've been doing. So today is National Banana Split Day. Did you know that? I didn't know that until I got a newsletter from um, my extension office back in Kentucky. And um, they listed some random days. And today, of all days, is National Banana Split Day. Well, you'll never believe what kind of cross stitch I have to show you from my old FFOs. Pretty fun. So this stitch was done in 1980, <laughs> and so there's your banana split, and also some other yummy things. So has my maiden name initials there, and so 1980, 40 years ago. Wow. So that was that's pretty fun. Enjoyed stitching that. <clears throat> so, if you like banana splits, today's the day to go get one. Maybe they'll even be a special. And then I have old projects ready for FFO. And um, I pulled one out, one of my Mill Hill kits, and that I want to show you. 
and it is from their autumn series number nine and again the kit comes with perforated paper and all the beading and the threads that you need um, I saw a lot of Mill Hill kits down in um, Finley at the craft gallery um, they're just such fun kits to, to make and so colorful and if you like beading and that kind of thing they're a lot of fun they usually have a button so this one has a turkey button in it and I've had this stitched for a while so it, it definitely needs to move along and get finished this fall because I don't have a lot of ball stitching to display that's fully finished so would really like to get this one finished fully finished so here it is so really pretty for all colors it is stitched on a linen um, best I can tell it's a 28 count linen that I had in my stash at some time and this has been done for a while I've had it ready to go for a while yeah. that one's a lot of fun it might have a date on here let's see if there's a date 2002 on this particular package though so. all right so share recent FFOs so these are things that have been um, fully finished and in preparation for going down to the craft gallery and having a little table, I thought I might try my hand at some project bags and a pin cushion. And I had made um, this pin cushion before. This is my pin cushion, but I made a similar one out of similar fabrics for the sale. And I was pleased that I sold it. So this was a lot of fun. This comes out of the book, if I can put my hands on it, called Pin Pals by Carrie Nelson. And uh, it's a really cute book, lots of fun pincushions to make. So I think Laura, the serial stitcher, I think she has this book and was thinking about making pincushions out of it. But so far, I've been stuck on the first uh, pincushion instructions, which would, which would have been you know, this one. And I stuff it with uh, crushed walnut shells. So I did sell that pincushion. Uh, the one I made for the sale, um, I made it more square. It, it's very similar to that one, but I just didn't um, trim it to, I think it was four and a half by five and a half or something like that. I just made it a square. And then some of the project bags that I made, I had some leftover by Annie Stabilizer, so I made uh, a couple of project bags. And I have one similar to this that Michelle from Creative Mayhem bought for her daughter-in-law. And um, this was fun. Uh, it does have some vinyl on it. And the Be Creative is the fabric that I use from Deb Strain. And she actually has a new line coming out. And I'm excited to see that. It it's also has some bees in it. And of course, you all know I like my bees. So, and then this is the back. This is actually a Robin Pandolf print. But fun project bag. It's got a zip top and polka dot. I uh, love those polka dots. And then I had a happy discovery in my fabric stash um, the past two weeks. Um, I found some Blackbird Design fabrics and again used some by Annie Stabilizer to uh, make this bag. And this was so much fun. Um, this would be a small project bag and you could use it like for the little flip it charts maybe for Lizzie Kate or something like that so it was, it's more for a small project um, I found this little bird charm I thought it was so cute and the favorite is this fabric on the back the blackbird fabric and I think this fabric is from the mid 2000s maybe 2006 7 8 something like that maybe I'm not exactly sure but I just love this floral. That, those colors are just so pretty. And then I made a little different size for this one. Again, it's the same fabrics. Did a little bit different um, zipper pull on it. And that fun fabric on the back. Just love that. That was a happy discovery, and I've got more, so I can make more 
if anybody's interested, let me know. And then I had this fabric and this fun zipper. I had not tried using the zipper before and it's a little bit of a challenge and it's a little grouchy getting it open. So I may wind up keeping this one myself because um, that zipper is a little more grouchy. You have to actually sew on top of the zipper instead of putting the fabric on top and sewing it. So it's a little different um, sewing with those zippers so you can see the pretty edges. You wanna keep those on top. So it's a little, a little different. This is actually quilted with a piece of batting, so it's a little bit thinner bag, but the um, the vinyl is the 16 gauge vinyl on this bag. And then finally, I made another little Christmas one. And this one has such a cute little print. I love that print. And the fabric at the top is kind of sparkly. Um, it's got snowflakes in it and this cute little bell um, zipper pull. And this cute fabric on the back. So those are some fully finished items that I made. I tried my hand at bags this past week, so that was fun. So now I have some new projects that are ready to be fully finished. I did show one of these items on my uh, Instagram page recently. And so this is a Just Nan and I'm gonna show the piece and the chart. The chart is on a, like a card. So it's, you could, kind of these little purplish cards, but that's the finished piece. It's got beading on it and I didn't think I would have it finished because I couldn't find those um, purplish lavender beads that go all the way around the perimeter. But one day when I was digging for something else, I found those beads too, so. Now it's fully finished and just has to be put into a project of some sort. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but I really think it's pretty. Uses the Krynik for the honeycomb in the center. So, pretty colors. And again, this is a Beehive Violets by Just Nan. And it's just a little, little card. And I have some tatting that I may try to incorporate into the finishing. I think that would be pretty. The other thing is I showed you as a whip last week is the Berry Sweet. Um, this little cute little bumble bee bear holding the bee skip button. And I was able to get the bees attached onto it and the little button. It's really a fun piece. My challenge right now is getting these horizontal wrinkles out. I've worked on it a little bit, but um, I'm going to have to work on it some more before I actually finish assembling it. Um, these rods are what you um, fold over the tops and the bottom over the rods to hang it. And right now I've got to make sure that <clears throat> I get those wrinkles out. So I'm gonna have to work on that some more. But I'm excited to get this one a few steps further. <clears throat> All right, so this moves me on to whips. So works in progress. So you've seen my Alphabet Treasures. This is a Mill Hill publication, Alphabet Treasures. It's a pretty big piece. Lots of buttons, lots of treasures. And one of my goals for going down to Craft Gallery, besides getting to meet some wonderful people, was to talk to Paula about this piece. I've never had a piece framed that had all these treasures on it and all the buttons. And so, I wanted to know what she recommended for these treasures because they kind of move around. They're attached in one spot, but they're still kind of loose and they move around. And so Paula gave me some tips on um, getting the treasures to stay in place. And then also I need more treasures um, to, to purchase more treasures to finish it. So she um, said, 
just give her a list and she would work on that for me. So I emailed her a list, updated list yesterday and I did work on it some more. I didn't think after last video I was going to be able to work on it anymore because I thought I was completely out of everything. But um, I did find some more of the, the yellow like I thought I was missing the rest of those beads, but I found those when I was finding other things. Um, so I've attached the button to the bunny. Um, I went ahead and attached the sunflower button up here. <clears throat> so there's quite a few charms, like I said, that are still missing. Um, I was able to get some of the red, um, I think they call them rondelles, and I purchased some of those at Paula's shop. I uh, got a few other things and I've already put the bead, beads and the treasures on. There were a few things. Um, I believe this blue butterfly I purchased on Saturday and got it put on and still need to change that date. <laughs> so anyway, the fabric is kind of a light yellow linen. So it's coming along. It's I would love to change that date to 2020 and have it fully finished, framed and all, by the end of this year, if possible. And then also working on the Noel Naturals. I've shown this a couple of times as well. There's 11 of these, and these are, um, let's see, ornaments. And I I'm, was thinking I was going to finish them as ornaments, but I've kind of had another idea floating around, so may make a change there. We'll see. Um, so, what I have finished since I last visited with you. Um, I think I showed the cranberries and the pine last time, but I did not have the poinsettia finished or the mistletoe even started. So really like those. I, the mistletoe I think has become my favorite so far. I really like that one, but the poinsettia is really pretty too. Whoops. So these have been really fun. And one of the idea that's kind of floating around that I'm thinking I might try is maybe a banner um, where these would be, um, I would use this fabric as a background for a banner or a pennant or something. I'm not sure. So thinking about that, I found this at my local quilt shop on sale. So, um, it's a pretty red, and I think it would go well with it. And if I could find some pretty ribbon or um, a pretty rope of some sort to hang like a banner or a pennant kind of look, I think that might be pretty. We'll see. <clears throat> All right, so quilty things. My friend and I have been working on um, the Farm Girl Vintage. I have completed all the blocks that I'm going to make, I think, based on what I had planned and charted out on a piece of graph paper. I've finished all that I plan to do as far as the six and a half inch blocks. And then I'm also working on the Farm Girl. Mine's a little bit different twist. It's not going to be just the blocks on the quilt. It's going to have the words Farm Girl, and it's going to have a farm girl that's larger than the six and a half inch blocks. So I'm going to pull my my phone around so you can see the blocks closest to the words farm girl are the newest blocks. So it includes a sewing machine, a strawberry block. So uh, let's let's go around this way. So you can see the girl there. I've started on her. She's holding a flower. I'm working on the flower and then she has um, legs with uh, boots and a chicken down by her feet. I may put my kitty cat by her feet since I like kitty cats and don't have any chickens. 
And then the farm girl words and then the, the blocks, like I said, down beside the farm girl are some of the newest blocks that we have completed together. Love the sewing machine and the strawberry jam. So lots of blocks. I've got about 88, I believe, total. So my design wall is full. No more blocks could fit there. So our plan this week is to um, start sashing them. And I got a text from my friend and she's like, we call each other Louise. I don't know how that came about, but it's, I'm Louise and she's Louise and we just, we just roll with it. It's just funny. It just keeps, keeps some humor. And, um, she's like, Louise, I think I'm miscalculated. I don't, I don't think I have enough blocks for what I want the quilt to be, how big I want it to be to cover my bed. And, um, she had, she had made a hundred blocks. She made an actual extra one. She planned for 99, but made an extra one of one of the sunflower blocks because she didn't like the first one she made. And she's like, I think I need more. So we've been scrambling through Lori Holt books and her blog, trying to find extra blocks for her to make that she likes. And, um, so she's, she's been working to get her extra blocks. And then she didn't have a design wall either. So she's been working on getting her, um, a design wall up. And so she's got that up now and she's been putting her blocks up there. And I think that's made a lot easier for her. So it, it's been a lot of fun to work on this quilt with her. Um, like I said, this Friday is the plan to start putting the sashing together with the blocks in the order that we want them in. And we'll see how it goes. So the other work in progress as far as quilting that I've showed you is my bullseye quilt and it's on the back of my chair again so I'm going to kind of move around so you can see. I have stitched one way a, a diagonal through the quilt and I plan to stitch the other way um, so there's some of the quilting on it and I buried all the threads so far for this um, the diagonals that I've already stitched and then I will um, go the opposite direction. I'll just cross hatch it. And then you get the texture of the quilt. You know, these are raw edge and they're they're loose. Um, they're stitched down, but they're, they're, the edges are, are still loose. When you wash it and dry it, that's when you get the fraying and the texture and it just becomes a really cool look. And so um, this is still a work in progress, still trying to get it quilted. And because it's kind of on um, the fallish colors, it's got multiple colors in it, but it just reminds me kind of of a fall quilt. I'd really like to get it finished. <clears throat> All right. So now I'm going to share with you some things that are exciting that are coming along. Um, I recently had the opportunity to go to a local uh, flower farm and my daughter and I did a you pick. And so it was so much fun. We had a great time and just gorgeous flowers. Well, I noticed that they were doing um, you pick in conjunction with some other activity. One was watercolor painting and one was kayaking because we have the Maumee River real close by and um, you could do a combination of things there. And so I reached out to them and said, what about, would you be interested in a make and take stitch and you pick? And so they said yes. And so I started designing and was thought that wool applique would be a appropriate thing that we could do. We could do a make and take there with wool applique. Um, wouldn't require sewing machines. It's all hand stitching. And um, we could socially distance. She has a little place where she can, um, there's tables already set up and you can limit the number of people, but you um, can be far enough apart that we're uh, within regulation of what they're recommending right now. So um, we've set up dates of September 10th and September 25th, and I'm just waiting to see what kind of response we get. But in the meantime, I've designed the pattern. I have um, had two folks test it for me and gotten their feedback, so I'll be making adjustments to the pattern. But I'll go ahead and share with you today um, what I've been working on. So the prototypes, the first pieces that I made, um, they're, they're eyeglass cases. And so this is the first piece. It's a little sunflower eyeglass case. 
So there's your thinner. Okay. And then this is a hydrangea. So this piece of wool was actually from um, an aunt who gifted me some of her old fabrics. And then um, I used some other wools that I had in my stash. So these were my prototypes. These were, these were the things that kind of my jumping off ground. I didn't have enough of any of these wool pieces to be able to do a full class. So I started looking for a local source for wool. And just 12 minutes from my house in Grand Rapids, Ohio, there's a place called the Natural Fiber and Wool Shop. And she has what's called wool batting. And it's merino wool and it has been dyed um, certain colors that they think are just fun colors. And then she has a felting machine that has 800 needles that you can run the wool bat back and forth through to be able to felt it. And so I spent a day there uh, not too long ago getting some wool, prepping it for this class, and um, getting the colors that I liked and all of that. And so the wool that resulted in, in that process was this piece. So this is wool from the Natural Fiber and Wool Shop. And the blue and the green and then the yellow. Now the brown I had, uh, it was another piece from my aunt's stash and I had enough of the brown. But the golden color, the green, and the blue all, all came from that shop, and I felted it. And so this was a lot of fun to prep. And so in my class, I will teach how to stitch these specialty stitches, which they're not hard. They're just the uh, stem stitch. And then this is kind of like a kind of like a herringbone stitch. And then this is just a straight stitch or a back stitch. And then just a stitch over the edge of the sunflower. And then the the edge is a blanket stitch. Or some people call it a buttonhole stitch. So there's the sunflower. And then this is the hydrangea. So for the hydrangea backing, the wool that we used, I should have had this out, but I didn't think about that, is a Jacob wool. The wool for the sunflower, the background, is a merino wool from Wyoming that she gets and dyes. And then this is called Jacob wool. So, I was talking about the quilt or the, excuse me, the wool bat. This is what it started out before I needle felted it. It looks like this. So this is what I used for the stem and the leaves. And then when I finished felting it, this is what it looks like. That's how flat it can get. And the needle felting, this machine has 800 needles and you can see the variegation. I just love it. It just turned out so great. Here's the Jacob wool. And again, it started out in a bat, just like the green I just showed you. And I left it a little bit thicker because of making the case. And here's the blue. It's so pretty. It has a little bit of purple in it. Just so pretty. And then to make the hydrangea petals, I purchased a bat that was kind of a variegated, you can see the dyeing is variegated here. And then you can take wool roving and lay it on top of your bat and create some different colors that you can then cut out. So this is with the roving on top and then you run it through the felting machine and you can get some variegation and then when you cut your petals it looks realistic 
This is the roving that I used for the sunflower petals. So she had several different, and you can even see the different textures of the roving. Some are a little fuzzy. This is a little smoother. Oh, it's such a fun process. So I'm really hoping that folks will sign up for this class. I've enjoyed prepping for it and I'm getting ready to start making kits. And um, then on September 10th, I will launch the pattern and it'll be available to everyone. And so if you are interested, I would love to know about it. Um, this is an exciting thing for me. I've never published a pattern, so I'm very excited and I'm so thankful for my friends who were willing to take the pattern and I sent them a kit with the wool in it and they made their projects and they look great and they gave me feedback that I needed. So that was really, really fun. Um, but I would love to hear your feedback and hear your um, questions about it and see uh, if there's anything that um, you might have um, questions about or ideas or whatever. So excited about that. Um, that's coming up, getting ready to um, teach that class. I'd love it if both classes filled up, but we did two dates just to see if there was a better date than the other. So we'll see. I'll keep you posted. And the name of the farm is Garden View, and she's on social media. Um, uh, it's Grand Rapids, Ohio, and she does uh, wedding um, venues, decorating with her flowers, and gorgeous, just absolutely beautiful. And the you pick flower experience, like I said, was just phenomenal. It was so much fun. Um, unfortunately, we haven't had a lot of rain. Um, around here lately and so she's kind of had to cut back on the amount of you pick opportunities because the flowers aren't um, coming back as quickly but there still is opportunity if you live in the local area um, I think it's more of a weekend um, opportunity now besides what she already has scheduled like my class and those type events so anyway if you um, are on social media check it out it's Garden Bee Farms in Grand Rapids, Ohio. Um, yesterday, <clears throat> I was re um, Cynthia Brew with um, Stitching in the Light reached out to me about doing a stitch along with her and Olivia from Pumpkin Hollow Quilts and Christy from Crosshatch Quilts. And it's called the Great Pumpkin Sal. It's, that's gonna be the hashtag and it's gonna be stitching pumpkins all through the month of October. And um, she reached out to several of us to see if we might would want to participate. And there's going to be a, um, let's see how I want to say this. We're going to donate items um, that we would then, um, people would be able to um, make a donation to a charity that Cynthia is going to share with us about. And um, then anybody that makes a donation, their name will go in the hat for the different items that have been donated um, that various ones have donated and made. Um, so things like project bags or um, uh, needle books, uh, things like that. So um, that's coming more. I just wanted to share a little bit about that. I am going to be participating. And so I've been gathering some pumpkin charts. Um, I had a few that I found. Um, but the pumpkin um, stitch along, I think I showed this last week when I showed my bread covers and there's a real pretty pumpkin bread cover option. That was one idea that came across. And then in this holidays and cross stitch 1990, uh, you can see on the front, there's um, a pumpkin here and they give that in, as a chart in, in here. That would be cute on something. So I thought about that. And then Heartstring Samplery did a free chart for Thanksgiving last year. It's called Thankful Every Day. And this is the not, not the best picture of it, but it um, is just like a bowl full of pumpkins. And so um, I thought about doing it. So those are a couple of charts that I've come across that I thought would be fun to sew when we do the stitch along. And that's called The Great Pumpkin Sal. And it'll be with Cynthia 
Stitch in the Light, Olivia Pumpkin Hollow Quilts, and Christy with Cross Hatch Quilts. So I'm um, looking forward to that. And I really appreciate Cynthia reaching out to me. That was really an honor. I, I really am looking forward to that. So haul uh, brings me to haul. And from Stash Unloading, I did buy something. Uh, this was Busy Bee Sewing Case. And I'm not sure if I'm going to do it in the blue or not and all the variegation of those letters. I'm not sure. But um, I thought it was really cute. And, of course, it's bees. And so that was that was fun. And it came with um, the fabric to do the inside. So um, I really like the, the scissor fob. I think that's really cute. So... Very cute. So that was one thing that I had purchased. And then I showed you my alphabet treasures. Um, that was, um, bought some treasures for that. I already put them on. Um, so just gonna have to wait till Paula can get the others ordered and I'll purchase those. I did purchase some vinyl and uh, zippers for these project bags. So purchase some of those and then I went to um, my local quilt shop for the first time since I've moved here um, I went to the quilt foundry it's over in mommy and really a fun shop and found some treasures there that's where I found the red fabric that I'm thinking about using for my no all naturals finish and then found some fun fall fat quarters so could use those for finishing, but I had pulled out a pattern. I don't have a lot of fall deco, especially in the quilting. So I thought maybe I would um, try doing this cute coach house design, the truck and the pumpkin. So it would go right along with our stitch along because we're not just limiting the stitch along to uh, cross stitch. It can be other things. So this would be a fun piece to do. So I was thinking about these fabrics as part of this, probably a wall hanging or a little um, table topper, be cute. So that was part of the haul. So that brings me to the end of my video for today. I thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I just enjoy doing this. I've met so many people already, wonderful people, fun people. I've enjoyed watching their videos and laughing and being inspired, being encouraged, um, just have really enjoyed this. And as always, I want to leave you with an encouraging word. And today I found a scripture that I hope will be an encouragement to you. And it says, pleasant words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. This is Proverbs 16, 24. Have a great day.